Hi, Vlad here, let's talk about dendrite fragments. Android fragment lifecycle is complicated and official documentation is even worse. But don't panic, there's an easy way to understand and use it correctly. Here I'll try to describe the idea behind a fragment lifecycle and give you an updated and practical guide on how to use it without any complex diagrams. Let's go! Let's start with the easy part. Fragments are hosted by an activity and it contains the same set of activity lifecycle callbacks. On create, on start, on resume and pause and stop and on destroy. When activity transitions between the states, it calls the same six lifecycle callbacks for all the fragments inside the current activity. You can check my video about Android activity lifecycle to get more information about them. So what's the difference between fragment lifecycle and activity? The main difference is that activity creates only one view for the entire lifetime, but fragment views can be recreated and even dynamically changed during the lifetime. Because of this difference, we need to treat the fragment lifecycle a little bit differently and we will start with onCreate. This callback is called immediately after onCreate in the activity. At this time, on creating activity might not be finished yet, so work with the views here can lead to a crash. Therefore, don't use this callback for anything related to the views. This rule also applies to live data observers, which updates the UI. The main reason is that onCreate is not called when the fragments view recreated, so it will not receive the updates from the live data. Use this callback for non-UI work, for example, inject members with DI, restore data from saved instance state bundle, or initialize variables. OnCreateView is the place where the fragment should conflate layout from XML. It's called right after the onCreate callback and when the fragment recreated from the activity backstack. At this stage, the view is not created yet and that's why there's advice not to work with views directly like setting click listeners or initialize recycle view. Usually I don't even implement this callback. You can provide a layout ID to the fragment constructor and it'll do the job for you. The main goal of fragments in almost all architectures is to represent the view. And that's why on view created callback is heavily used. The view is available and here we can work with it like set listeners, observe live data, initialize recycle view and so on. By the way, if you observe the live data which updates the UI, remember to use view lifecycle owner instead of lifecycle owner. Otherwise, they will be not removed at the view destroy and you will have a bug with duplicated observers. And that's it. Android Fragment Lifecycle is complex, but in reality we use only a couple of important callbacks. In the majority of cases you don't need to worry about others, but if you still want to use some other callback, keep in mind that on activity created is deprecated and you should use on view created instead. Don't clean your click listeners and set views to null in on destroy view. In general, you can skip on attach and do the needed stuff in on create and set retain instance is deprecated. Use the view model instead. Don't overcomplicate the work with the fragments. Try to keep it simple and you will avoid side effects on your app. See you next week.